Hello, I'm Red Eyes, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 2 of my Minecraft Let's Play. So, first of all, I have to give a big shout out to Doc M. Um, he unexpectedly actually gave me a shout out in his video, and um, yeah, I guess he must have liked the LP. So, thank you very much for that. He's a big inspiration of mine. That's kind of why I'm doing this, because I want to learn to build like him. So, that's awesome. And welcome everyone who's come from uh, his channel, or anyone anywhere else. Uh, yeah, so in this episode, there's a few parts. First of all, a few minutes of uh, slime experiments, then a couple minutes of TNT, uh, a few minutes of my cave adventure, which actually has a lot of info in it, because I died a lot and had to learn a lot of things. And then I move on to some live commentary and for all those asking, I will be doing more live stuff uh, as I get better at this. But for now, I had a lot of prep to do. And I filmed most of it, so I thought you may as well see it. And I guess that's kind of the spirit of the Let's Play. So, enjoy! And one more thing is, as I listen back to this episode, um, my voice is different in all the parts. So let me know which one sounds best and I'll do my best to uh, replicate that voice. Okay. So I decided the mountain wasn't quite low enough and uh, I needed more TNT. So I went back to my mob trap and the way this thing works is I have to be there and go to bed at night because there's no torches outside and it screws up the mob trap if you uh, go AFK. It does still work, but nowhere near as good. So I've been slime fishing. And I send carts down to my slime trap, mine carts, and then they come up like so. And they go into a little uh, holding area. And what my plan is, is to use big slimes as a form of mob grinder because when they bump into you they deal a lot of damage and so I was trying to send the cart kind of uh, right next to the mobs in this uh, tube thing which is normally my grinder but I've decommissioned it and yeah so I was trying to get them to take damage through the corner and I tried a couple different setups and I tried the mobs being at different heights so I like added another block under the cart to make them higher or lower and nothing seemed to work. I'm sure it is possible because I keep on getting killed by slimes like <laughs> whenever I'm doing these experiments and it's really annoying because the items fall onto the track and they clog the track and you try and approach to get them but before you do, you bump into the big slime, and uh, I died like that quite a few times. So, that didn't work, but it did pass the time quite nicely. And I ended up with a lot more TNT. And I even found a couple dogs on the way home. Useless as they are. <laughs>
Okay, so even after all that, uh, that was 98 TNT, by the way, including the one I'm about to set off. Uh, even after all that, 98 TNT, there's still about another half of the mountain to level. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flatten half of it and start building half of the factory. And then I'll dig out the other side when I kind of get around to it. When I get some more TNT. And this is quite a good death coming up. <laughs> the, uh, I don't know if the creeper killed me or if the fall does. Who gets the points there? Anyways, I did a lot more digging and I flattened the whole thing. I kind of wonder if it wouldn't have just been faster to dig the whole thing out by hand, but, uh, whatever. It's done now, and that pillar is kind of the approximate height of where it was before. And you can see my super tree next to a normal tree. And I guess it's not that much bigger, because the leaves can only go out so far from the wood. But I think it looks a bit more uh, in proportion. So now that everything was all flattened out, I was able to start setting up my factory. And I started with these um, mob softeners from my fast minecart grinding setup. And I realized I needed some lava. So I kind of scoped out where a slime uh, area is kind of down there. And I thought, oh, I'll just go down there, get some lava, you know, dig straight down. It won't be a problem. And it turned out to be quite an adventure. So, um, you know, it started off fine. I kind of started digging out a 4x4 hole for some reason, or a 2x2. Two two. And things were going alright then, putting some ladders. And then I decided, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll just go one by one. <laughs> you can see I'm going straight down. And I came into this cave. And uh, I forgot to put the ladders back. So the first interesting thing I found was this mob spawner with no chest. So that was a bit unsatisfying. But uh, that wasn't the worst of it at all. You know, this cave turned out to be pretty big. And I did the whole thing without F3, without uh, switching to peaceful. And uh, check out how it went. So this was my first big mistake. Uh, never jump into a pit full of uh, creepers and zombies and skeletons. Not recommended. And because I forgot to put the ladders back, I would take loads of fall damage on the way back. And I would get down there, almost get my stuff, and I thought, right, I need to make a bed, and um, that way I'll set my spawn point. That's the exact same spot I died twice before. That's the same room as well. And uh, then I thought, right, okay, I need some bread, you know, to keep me alive. This is all within kind of five minutes of uh, me first dying. Then things calmed down a bit until this happened. So you'll notice I have half a heart. And what you don't know is I'm completely lost. And I don't want to die at this point. So I'm kind of running away. And I find some gold, and that to me means it's time to set up a base. So if you look, I have 11 pieces of wood. Enough for a crafting table, or a chest, but not both. And I wanted to keep my stuff. You know, I'm looking around, I'm getting quite nervous. And uh, luckily I have a sapling with me. So a sapling and some bones. And with this I was able to you know, quickly grow a tree, and that allowed me to get another piece of wood so I could make the chest and the crafting table. So thinking about it, I could have just made the bed, but I was kind of worried I would get woken up in the middle of the night, and if that happened, I would not have been able to find my way back, I don't think. And that would have been another stack of iron lost. You know, I don't know what I lost before, but... Um, Whatever it was, I don't want to lose more stuff. So I had no idea what time it is, so I just uh, held my finger onto the uh, right click until I went to bed. And yeah. And then I died again. <laughs> but at this point, it doesn't really matter, you know. I have my spawn set nearby. 
I'm quite free to explore and find more um, dungeons. This one at least had a few chests in it. And another thing you can do is just suicide if you have low health. You know, I'm right next to my bed here, so it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to spawn right, uh, right next to it. Yeah. So then I thought, right, time to get some lava. <laughs> oh, that annoyed me so much. I just kind of walked straight into it. I had loads of buckets. I dumped most of the stuff already. But, um, yeah, I, I did lose most of it, except for a few buckets. And it's a good thing because uh, I just ended up dying straight away anyways. And then finally I was able to collect my lava and uh, as a bonus I even managed to find a couple diamonds. So I guess it wasn't all bad in the end. And the cave is nowhere near finished actually. Uh, it's huge. And on the way out I did a really stupid thing and got very lucky. So, uh, this is a little cave I found. I was digging straight up to uh, leave the cave system. That's the uh, tube there on the right I came up of. And you'll notice I just lost my pickaxe. And if you look in my inventory, I don't have any wood. And, uh, yeah, not a good situation to be in. So, luckily, I was quite near the surface. You know, there was um, sandstone, so I, I knew I was quite near. I might have to swim up, I guess. But as luck would have it, I emerged on a small island and uh, was able to make my way home and safely deposit my slim pickings into my chest. And, but yeah, this is the worst kind of haul I've ever had from caving. And I attribute it to not playing in peaceful and uh, not using F3 at all. It's a totally different experience. Anyways, on to a bit of fun. So this is me building a bridge in reverse. Uh, I was able to do that because I made the whole thing. It's just a line of cobble. And then I looked at it and realized it was far too dominating. So I decided to destroy it again. A bit of a waste of time, but it was good to know because I do want to make it look uh, good in the end, so it is worth uh, testing. Okay, so time to get technical. I started to put the factory together, and I started with these um, mob softeners from my um, uh, fast minecart grinding and uh, minecart grinding with pistons videos. And what they do basically is you have water there, lava there, water there. Like it's just this little unit here. And each one deals two damage. So they get hit by the lava, take two damage, and then the water extinguishes them. And I started to do it, and I thought, no, this isn't right. Because there's something I didn't mention before, but I want to try and do this whole LP without using signs to hold up uh, liquids. Because, I don't know, I just think it will break at some point. I mean, it could easily be fixed. They could easily start to act like, um, uh, I don't know, like a flower or something and just burn or pop off. So, you know, I, I just kind of want to make it future-proof. It is the best technology around, but um, it's also a bit buggy, I think. Well, not buggy, but I think it could, could easily be fixed. So I decided I probably wouldn't do those. That being said... I made a big mob trap below, which I'm not going to uh, show you right now. It's just a mob trap. Uh, again, it doesn't use any signs, it just has the water flowing down in a long canal. And, you know, that's no problem. But I was trying to get them up without using um, the water ladder trick, or sign and water trick. So I just tried some ladders here for the spiders. That does nothing. And I tried the same for the tall mobs, in just a single block tube, like so. And that also did nothing. So I know it is possible, or at least it was in the past, because I used it in a different system I had 
for separating creepers. And basically the creepers and all the other mobs would go all the way up. And on their way up, the um, uh, skeletons would burn, and by the end there would only, only be creepers. But I haven't done that for a long time, and I don't know if it's still possible. So I had to make a traditional mob evader. The only difference being I used ladders. Because if it's a one wide cap, you can have a ladder, water ladder, and the tall mobs will not get stuck. But that only works if it's a one, uh, one block uh, tube. So I made a little crusher here to crush the mobs. Uh, it's just the tall ones that come through here. And yeah, that seems to work fine. Again, it has a sign holding the water, in the water, but if I made it a bit longer, that wouldn't be fun. So, um, the next thing I did was I started doing some experiments using pistons for crushers, and I wanted to make like a high speed one. So what this is, it's just um, a bunch of pistons kind of, I don't know what it's called, but, uh, whoops, <laughs> um, come on, come on, uh, yeah, like that, and when you turn it on, you hook it up to a clock, you get pushed along very quickly, if you fall through, so I thought I would, um, you know, put some lava above it, and blocks, and I did some experiments, and it did work, but the damage was inconsistent. And basically, sometimes you end up spending more time in there than, uh, than others, so the damage is inconsistent. And also, I thought it would be a bit too easy, and if I just had one a uh, long crusher, and all the mobs went through it. Um, yeah, it would work very good, but I don't know, it was just a bit too easy. You know, and the items do get separated, and they make their way down as well. So I thought, in line with the factory motif, I would set up some crushers. And I thought I would set up a whole big row of them. You know, kind of uh, quite industrial. And then the minecarts would come along the top, they drop down into the crusher. Uh, again, these are in my uh, minecart grinding with pistons video. But basically the end result is you have a the items falling into here, a minecart gets pushed across, and then onto this rail, and the items go uh, one way and the cart is then returned to the um, uh, pickup system. So, uh, the problem I'm going to have with these is deciding on the color scheme. You know, they're very easy to build. Um, that's why I'm going to do it, I think. You know, you just use one, two, uh, three pistons. That would be the crusher, comes out to here. Uh, that pushes the cart to here, so I need another one there. And this one piston should be a sticky piston. And that's basically it. Then you have to build a casing. Oh no, you put the crushers in, and then you build a casing to prevent the items from falling out. Um, so this will be glass around here. So you can see what's going on. But what I need to get some advice on is how I should... Um, what blocks to use, you know, to make it look good. There's a few elements. There's the the wiring behind, and there's going to be a block in the middle here. Um, there's the minecart track, which is going to come from above. Not necessarily like this, but probably something quite similar. Um, there's the crusher, which is these two pistons. And for those, I was thinking to use uh, netherrack, because it's kind of blood-colored and you know, I think it's appropriate, <laughs> I guess. And then the bottom two um, 
pistons or blocks are used to separate the item and push out the minecart. So I thought they should be different, if not the same. So maybe two two wood blocks or I don't know. I'm just not very good at that kind of thing. So yeah, that's about it really. I did uh, mostly mining and digging the mine tra uh, the mob trap and mining the rest of this out and going down on my cave adventure to get some lava. And by the way, I could have just gone over to uh, my base and got some lava easily. But I thought if I did that, there would be no incentive to find any gold. And I really need powered rail. So I went down there. There's the hole. And I did. I got 18 gold. So not a very huge amount, but it's definitely enough to get started on, on these. So what I'll do is I'll... Um, I don't know what I'll do. Okay, so I've had some time to think, and what I'm going to do is work on getting the tall mobs to go up the ladder, and uh, I'm also going to start working on the logic for all these crushers, because even though they're, they're easy to build, uh, the brains behind them I think are going to be pretty complicated. And I'll have to go and work on my mob trap as well, because the level I'm using is actually not in the hot zone. It's just below it. So I need to uh, work on the upper level, and that should uh, increase the spawn rate here. And I have to go back down to the caves and find some more gold. So I can start... Um, building the minecart track which is going to connect to this mob trap. So I need kind of another probably 30 gold or something. So should be nice and fun. <laughs> okay, I hope you've uh, enjoyed everything. Oh yeah, and once again another shout out to Doc M. Uh Yeah, it's really, really encouraging. So. Uh, yeah, as always, please leave some advice and comments and all that. I'm still working everything out, and I really appreciate it. And uh, the next episode should have more um, live stuff, because I don't think I'll film all the digging. I'll kind of film uh, the redstone stuff, probably. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>